Good morning, folks. It's been a while since we've done one of these morning news lifestyle. Let's do that today and try to offer a bit more perspective on what goes into these news each day. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and you know 193 angstroms, 304. These are the 48-hour loops. They will show the last 48 hours of what's going on on our star. And as we zoom in on 193 angstroms here, you can see really just not much happening. You actually were able to pick out the coronal ripple from the large CME uh, just a little more than 24 hours ago. We can see here in 304 angstroms that there also uh, is not much to look at. Um, we do notice some of these plasma filaments coming in uh, on the limb and some of the activity, and we do actually have a pretty interesting filament structure right there. Uh, center disk right now, so we'll keep an eye on that. Let's come down now to the solar flaring. Three days, six hours, really just not much to see as the sun has become a blank disk once more. Uh, coming down to the solar wind, you can see some of the error readings on Discover. Uh, really not as important, however, as showing this last little rise in the solar wind speed just uh, over the last 12 to 24 hours or so. We can see that on ACE, even with their once a day missing frames there for about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, obviously not a major stream, not even uh, as strong as the last one, which just produced a minor geomagnetic storm. And so right now we are uh, just dealing with some KP4 uh, and KP3, just a little bit more unstable in the magnetic field. Now this is really interesting. Let's come down to the endless spiral, because if you were thinking to yourself, this makes no sense based on what we saw in yesterday's news, you are absolutely right, except this is only showing one of the two powerful CMEs that came off the backside yesterday. So in the endless spiral, the central feature is the sun. Of course, yellow is the earth. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Venus in green, Mercury in orange, and this little red guy back here, that is Mars. Many of you remember that we are in that solar alignment with Mars, Earth, uh, Sun, Mars. But you might remember from seeing... Uh, the CME is coming out yesterday, and by the way, that little white dot, that bright one, right about to go behind the disk there, that is indeed Mars. So how does the endless spiral having the CME missing Mars all to this side, when you look at the breadth, half the solar system got tagged with the CME? Well, if you see that first little part that came out, that is indeed the only part that is on the endless spiral. They do not have the solar system-wide burst that came out second. They just have this first one, which looks like it'll just barely clip Mars. And if we take a look, uh, you know, before that big one comes out, there's that little pop out there, and that one actually might be fairly well represented on the endless spiral. Just have to see. Uh, I guess we won't see because we're not on Mars, actually, but maybe some of the ETs there will be kind enough to let us know what happened. Moving on. So coming back over to the sun now, we can see this bright region coming in over the left side. That is the eastern limb. And... We had questioned whether or not there were going to be some sunspots appearing on the disk, but we can tell as of this morning, since that region has turned into view, it is just surface plagues. Those white over the gray right there, those are just some areas where there's some stronger magnetism on the solar surface. But as you can see, no umbral cores and no sunspots. Let's go now over to Windy uh, so we can show you guys how to work this. Uh, I will start by having the pressure on. I will zoom out here so we can see the entire United States. Over here on the right side, uh, these are your, um, uh, those are your tools. And down there at the bottom, let me move that up. This is your timeline. What I do is I like to take a look at the pressure and I locate some of the low pressure systems. Uh, of course, we have these ones spinning uh, in the East Pacific. We have that one uh, approaching central Canada. And then we have the, this one that is just sort of approaching the New England and uh, Eastern Canada area there. I'll go ahead and I'll put on the rain and snow, and you can see that it is those lows that really bring a lot of that tropical moisture around uh, and up into, you know, extra tropical latitudes. As I run forward through the day here, you can see that we are going to have some showers coming to the southern states, but really the powerful storms are going to kick up tonight, and they're going to be on the convergence lines just north of the border there, and uh, maybe New England will get lucky and have the worst of that storm be uh, well moved offshore by then. Let's go ahead and go back to pressure, because I think we are going to go and do Europe next. I'm zooming in here, and I know I've cut off a bunch of Scandinavia, but that's because the powerful low is right there. And we'll see what that's going to be looking like today. Could be some flash flooding in the Central European regions. See where that's going to be moving on to into the next day. That really is just spreading out. Uh, we do have... Uh, 
another powerful low approaching the UK and Ireland there as well. So, no mysteries when we come down under. You see the low right there. You see another near New Zealand, but not quite with the uh, depth of the low that is uh, holding with the Antarctic one there and with the low that is just coming on screen there. Uh, this one just coming on screen since it is the most powerful and it is not connected to one of these big Antarctic uh, loops. That's the one that should have the most rain. And that is indeed what we see. That's the only little bit of green or yellow. Uh, as we run forward here, you can see that these systems are going to be producing rain as they move forward, but uh, they were not as strong as this one over here, which is now coming on screen. You see that one's got some of the yellow and the green. Back over in the pressure, you could see that was the one that was purple. That is the one that is strongest. That's the one carrying the most rain. It really is not all that complicated. Folks, even though this is a live-style morning news, we do want to share two articles with you. This one popped up on Cornell's archive last night. It's describing an approximately seven to nine month lag between the change in solar activity and the modulation of galactic cosmic rays. For those who don't know and who are new here, when solar activity goes up, galactic cosmic rays go down. And when solar activity goes down, galactic cosmic rays go up. But uh, it's just about three quarters of a year later. Up next, uh, we are looking at Jupiter's transient aurora, and I will go down and zoom in on the image they have here. What they're essentially saying is that the brightest and most incredible aurora in the solar system are triggered by volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon Io uh, and its interaction with the solar wind. For those who don't know, Io is the most volcanically active sphere uh, in our entire solar system. This one here comes from Riken. Uh, we're going to leave you here in 211 angstroms. This is the 48-hour loop of this, so this will just keep uh, running back and going over and over. Uh, even though we don't have a whole lot in terms of coronal holes, they are departing. We do have planetary geometry and inner solar system, uh, I guess you'd call them electrodynamics, with the CME getting ready to couple with Earth when it hits 1 AU. Both CMEs that goes for actually, both of them were pretty big, and those probably should be coupling with Earth within the next 24 to 36 hours. Uh, that will be the peak of the earthquake watch. Anyway, that is about all for this morning. Uh, we will do this regular style tomorrow, but until then, eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.